Yo, what's going on everyone? Alright, welcome back to more Trails of Cold Steel 2. It's your boy Top Cat the Gamer. We are back in Berea Hard after just arresting the Duke for raising Keldic to the ground. We're gonna start the Bonding Day events and the Stopover Day, starting with Eustace. The RMP should be able to take care of the mansion for the time being. Perhaps this is a chance for me to take one of the horses out for one a final ride before I leave. That sounds like that sounds kind of fun actually. Okay, mind if I join you, Eustace? I haven't even seen any of the family horses since that race we had. Not at all. That gives me an idea, in fact. Tell me. Huh? There. Alrighty. Reen borrowed one of the horses from the Alvaria mansion while Eustace rode another. Together they set off on horseback towards Aurochs Canyon with Eustace taking the lead. You wanna have another duel? <laughs> This is what we had our duel before, isn't it? Why'd we come out here? Yep. Draw your sword ring. I'd like I'd like to request another duel with you. Usus. Do you remember what you told me during our full field study here? You claimed that there was something honest about the way I fought. And that it was because I learned my swordsmanship from someone I trusted. I did, didn't I? My trust in my brother has not faltered. However, because of that trust, I fear that when the time comes to fight him, my sword will be hindered by hesitation. I dread the day that I would have to turn my blade upon my brother. I'm not proud of it, but that's how it is. I can hardly blame you, Eustace. Anyone in your position would feel that way. Perhaps, but that's why I'd like to face off with you, Ring. Whether I win or lose, I believe our duel will allow me to cast away my doubts. And through that, I should be able to better trust my own convictions regardless of whom I face. I realize that this is somewhat selfish request, but please, this is important to me. Well, now you know Reen's gonna do it. <laughs> Am I even allowed to say no after that speech? It's not often you ask for favors like this either. So sure, let's go. Uh, of course, Reen's going. Kick his ass. Just know that I won't be holding back. Hit me with all you got. With pleasure. Thus, Reen and Yusuf began their duel, putting all their strength into the battle. I wish you could actually see it. <laughs> they cleared their head of all distractions. Their focus purely on trying to be the victor. With that, the fight continued on until... <laughs> now this kid withstood the onslaught from Sarah but they're trying to make you think that he fought Eustace over here to some sort of standstill like come on man I don't even think I don't think I can move another muscle neither can I even in real battles it's not often that I fight to the point of exhaustion I think it's because we can read each other so well that we were able to fight to this point, really. Granted, I would see Mas I could see Master Kafai and Viscount Arce keeping keeping it up the whole day without getting tired or bored. We're not them, but I still think we pretty we did pretty well for a couple of teenagers. Huh. <laughs> Agreed. It was fun in our own strange way. Thank you, Reen. I feel as though I can go. I now go forth and fight with that same honesty yet again. I may have been taught by Rufus, but it was Class Seven who helped me to further develop my skills. No need to thank me. I'm just glad you were honest with me and asked. That was beyond awful. <laughs> All right, they found some laughter in it. Afterwards, they, man they somehow managed to summon up the energy to get their horses to return to Brea Hard.
All right. Um, as a matter of fact, and there's something over in like one of these drawers. I thought it was like a something. Maybe it's over here. I don't know. I remember there being something there. I feel as though I can put faith in my swordsmanship now. Let's keep moving forward without fearing whatever future awaits us. I don't know why I thought it was like something in one of these drawers or something you can get for him. I don't know. Maybe it's me. No. Oh, you know what? I remember what it was. Um, it was the uh, you get a windy color for the uh, the bike. That's right for the. Uh, yeah, I think and I think I already got it in the last one. Uh, I don't know if we can go to the Duke's room. Let's see. Okay, so they won't let they won't let me visit him. Express that he doesn't want to meet with anybody. Okay, all right, all right, so. Let us get the hell out of here. We are going to... Let's see. I got Emma's, Elisa's. I'll do Alfin's last. Fee, I think, is somebody else I needed to... I think it was Fee. No, it, okay, so it's... The ones I haven't gotten, um, Elliot, Machias, Eusis, Milium, and Alfin. I think I did get fees on the last thing. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, no fee. Let's go hang with Elliot. I wonder what's going to happen to Celtic now. I'm sure Duke Alvarez has been dealt with. But it's not going to heal the sadness in their hearts. And apprehending his own dad isn't going to cheer up UC either. He seems pretty down. I wonder if we can do something to cheer him up. I've got an idea. Hey, Elliot. What do you say we head over to the restaurant in the Central Plaza? Hmm? Which one? The one Yusuf's uncle runs. I think it might just cheer you up a bit. Deciding that this was the best way to cheer him up, Reen brought Elliot to the, the sorcery restaurant. Ah, because of music. Once there, they received a special permission from Yusuf's uncle to go up to the VIP floor. Yeah, the music. Uh, of course. What a beautiful melody. That pianist been that pianist has been in several music magazines, you know. Also, she's famous. That explains how her music manages to resonate so well. Only the pros can manage that. Of course, the same goes for you too, Elliot. What? No way. Just hearing her makes me realize that I've still got a long way to go. The world of music is really deep. Your mom was a pianist too, wasn't she? Yeah. I remember how she used to play all sorts of stuff for us. She always played something fun and lighthearted for me and Fiona whenever we were down. It worked like a charm, always cheered us right up. I bet she did the same for Dad, too. Thanks, Rain. I can see why you brought me here now. You wanted to remind me that music has the power to inspire and help people move on, right? Guilty. It's just a shame I couldn't do it with my own performance, really. That would have been cool. Sorry for sucking. <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself, Reen. In fact, you helped me realize that there's still something I can do for the people of Keldic. Now I just need a time and an ideal opportunity. Give us a shout when that time comes, okay? We'll gladly help out. Right. I think it's about time I had a go... Oh, I'll go at it myself. I'm, I'm tripping. I was like, what the hell is he saying? Listening is nice, but nothing beats actually playing works for me knowing Elliot went back down after setting his heart on playing Reen asked Hammond and the pianist for permission 
Fortunately, they were more than happy to agree, and everyone in the restaurant was soon able to enjoy a special performance from him. Damn, while well, getting on the piano, too. You can obviously tell that Elliot is far beyond talented of a normal musician. And you can see that that's literally that's literally where his uh, future lies. You know, unsurprisingly, he played on par with the pianist before him. And that is supposed to be a famous lady. So both Rena and the customers couldn't help but be fully entranced by the wonderful sound of his music. And he fully becomes that. So as you see, the series goes on. Elliot is, he's, he's, that's him, hands down. All right, um, hmm. Okay, so Lean and everybody else should be over here. There is Machius. Eustace's recent actions have me thinking. If my father stepped from the path of righteousness, would I be able to do the same thing Eustace did with you? I don't even want to think about it. It couldn't have been easy for him, of course. I take a, it take a lot of strength to stand up to your father like that. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I do agree with what they're saying, but at the same time, Eustace's dad was not necessarily great to him. So I'm pretty sure it was a lot easier than they think it was for him to just finally be like, I right, do you tripping. But I'm sure having our support is helping him make it through. He might not say it, but I think he appreciates us being here. You might be right. Aside from our support helping him, he's so full of himself that he's bound to recover once his ego reinflates itself. And on that note, I have shopping to do. Wouldn't want to show too much compassion, would we, Machias? What could we buy here, though? What are you here to buy anyway? Flowers for some special occasion? That's one way of, to put it. Actually, while you're here, might help me choose. I think it'd make him happier if you did. Together, Reen and Machias made their choice and walked to the North Cruising Highway. This is the Star Bridge, right? Is there a reason you bought that bouquet, Marcus? It's my way of paying my respects. This lake flow flows toward Keldic, so I guess here we'll do. It's for the market manager, isn't it? Well, yes, I owe him a lot after all. It's because of him we were able to avoid being noticed by the provincial army during our time in Keldic. I don't think Class 7 ever would have reunited if it weren't for his help. It's frustrating knowing that we'll never be able to pay him back. This is the least I could do for him. My kids. It was the anniversary of my cousin's death the other day too, but I wasn't able to visit her grave. I couldn't with how things are at that moment, but at least I can do for, them, uh, do for her too. Damn, they died on the same day? What are the odds of that? Oh, was it? What exactly are you planning to do with, with the bouquet? Guy has taught me the way the, about a Nord way of paying respect to the dead that I wanted to try. They say that by sending a bouquet down the river, your feelings will reach those that are departed. That's actually a beautiful custom. Like I, I mean, I've I've seen certain things and you know, different types of uh, media and stuff I've watched and. Where they, you know, of course, uh, they put the people on a raft in the river. They light a lantern, different things like that. That's a, this is this is a beautiful one too. This is my way of swearing an oath of uh, to the both of them that we'll make it through this war no matter what, and that I'll work towards turning Arabonia into a country where the innocent have no no need to suffer anymore, if only. Changing the entire country sounds impossible, but you know what, Machias? Part of me feels like we could pull it off. If we can make it through this, there's no limit to what we can do, to what we can change. 
that is foreshadowing so yeah when you play through all four games there's a lot of foreshadowing there you really think so I'm glad you feel the same as I do pretty cool custom I'm sure your cousin and the market manager are watching over us too so let's make sure not to disappoint them wouldn't dream of it watch me you two with class 7 by my side I'll make sure to fulfill this vow I've given that was nice great bonding event right there Reen and Maki stood in respectful silence as they watched the bouquet float into the distance once it was completely out of view, they walked back to Bray Hard. I dig that one. That was dope. Alright. Moving right along. Miriam. There's also someone. Is she inside here, though? Okay, she must be back over here. There she is. Hmm, which one do I want? Hey, Milliam, never picked you as the bookstore type. What are you looking for? I'm not. I just want a good book for making sweet stuff. After all our hard work, I thought it'd be nice to make a treat for everyone. Wow, that's really thoughtful of you. I'm sure the others will be thrilled. It's kind of surprising to hear that she thought of this out of the blue, too. Just you wait. You guys are going to love it. Whatever it is. <laughs> no promises. I won't eat it all. I won't eat it all up before you get a chance to try it, okay? It might be too delicious. As thoughtful as she's being, I'm kind of nervous about letting her cook on her own. <laughs> I bet you are. What do you say to letting me be your... I forgot how it goes. Is it, is it Sue? Say? Your state, your Sue chef on this one? If you want. But I get to order you around and you can't get in my way or you will suffer the consequences. Deal? You got it. No idea where this confidence is coming from, but now I can make sure she doesn't blow anything up. I mean, she was in the cooking club for like, what, half a year or something, so she had to learn something. We should probably start by deciding what we want to make first. After some deliberation, the two settled on making an apple tart. They made a quick a supply stop in the store, bread hard, and then headed to the, to the courageous kitchen, rolled up their sleeves, and got to work. He ya! <laughs> Careful, Milliam. Look, this is how you're supposed to hold it, see? Aw, you're always cramping my style. Cooking's all about heart, and I've got tons of that. That is very true. She does have a ton of heart. She is a little, you know, we're very immature still, so. Well, you're going to stab me in the heart if you don't stop brandishing that kitchen knife like a deadly weapon. Ugh, my arm's going dead. Can I stop whisking this now? Sure, if you don't want it to rise in the oven properly. Come on, stop whining and concentrate. And no tasting, no tasting until it's done. Ah, fine, fine. Full speed at whisking ahead. Great. Now we just need for to wait for it to cool. Ooh, I'm so excited. Is it ready yet? It's been less than a minute. Watching over and supporting Melium proved to be no small task. Thankfully, the avatar was successfully completed. Actually came out pretty good looking. Yay, we're finally done. And look at how nice it looks. It's really magical what can happen when you don't use salt instead of sugar. I mean, wait, when you don't use salt, salt instead of sugar? Huh. Oh, why'd you have to ruin the moment by bringing that up? Still, thanks for all the help. You're welcome, it was fun. This idea kind of came out left field, though. When I think of you, I think of destruction, not creation. <laughs> Any particular reason you decided to make something for a change? I don't know. 
I just kind of, I just feel kind of something. Like, it's hard to describe, but I've got this weird tightness in my chest that won't go away. I think it first showed up when I saw what happened to Keldick. It's got me all restless. I always feel like I've got to do something. It doesn't matter what as long as I do it. I was hoping the feeling would go away when we caught Duke Alvarez, but that didn't happen. Sorry about that. Oh, man. If anything, Eustace having to arrest his dad only makes things worse. Any idea what I've got, Dr. Ring? I know exactly what you've got, and it's not anything unusual. It's called sadness. Everyone feels it sometimes, but I guess this might be the first time you have. But that's what this is. Neat. I had no idea. I've never felt like this before. It's kind of out of character for me, though. Personally, I think this might actually be a good thing. It's a sign that you're growing and maturing. As a person, I mean, not as an intelligence agent. I'm growing? Sad things happen. It's a fact of life. But it's by overcoming those things and moving past them that we grow as people. So don't be ashamed of how you're feeling. There's a reason to hide it if you're sad. You matter too much. There's no reason to hide it if you're sad. You matter too much to do that to yourself. You really think so? Okay. I'm still not totally sure how to deal with how I'm feeling right now. But thanks for talking to me about it. <clears throat> All right. Their sad conversation complete. Reen and Milliam put the finished apple tart in the fridge to share with the rest of the friends later. Afterwards, they both left the courageous and returned to Berea Hard. All right. That was okay. I can't believe that 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 event though is the thing that boost y'all along, I guess. <laughs> like, what? Alright. So, Alfin, and then I gotta decide on who's gonna... who I'm gonna do the final one with. Those cryptids have fought... I mean, you fought, seem to have been truly fearsome opponents. I know how difficult it must have been to slay all them all, but you've, uh, sh you should be very proud of what you've done. Remember, those who once feared them will now be able to sleep more easily at night, and it's all because of you. So you get the last medal for defeating all the cryptids. I really hope so, Your Highness. There's an extra crypt cryptid that we haven't fought yet, so still got to figure that out. And you're right. They were ridiculously strong, and they were like nothing we'd ever fought before either. Showing them up, I mean, them showing up is one thing, but just appearing all over the place in such an odd short time span... It's more than a little odd. I agree. It's unsettling in a word. The war has been showing, uh, sign, showing no, no signs of ending either. It's only getting worse. We likely won't stop bumping into them until we figure out what's causing them to appear in the first place. Still, I'd rather you didn't worry too much, Your Highness. All that means is, we'll, is that we'll keep doing what we've always been doing. We've got the Courageous, no matter what cryptids causing trouble, we can fly there, take care of it in a flash. You really are dependable, Reen. Hearing that, it's hard to imagine anyone more fitting to receive this. Medal of Strength. I've seen this emblem before. It's called the Medal of Strength and it's one of the medals that make up the Order of the Phoenix Wings. I can hardly think of a better way to show your strength than defeating creatures beyond those, our comprehension like those. So please accept it. I like nothing more. I'm so envious of uh, of Elise having such a dependable brother. Do you think she'd be willing to share? You could be my brother for half the week while she has Prince Oliver. <laughs> I'm not sure that would be very fair to Prince Oliver. <laughs> not to worry, Reen. I was only joking. Or oh, was I? I don't think she was. Oh, thinking about it, I've given you three medals now, haven't I? Strength, charity, love. I'm amazed you were able to earn all of them in such a short amount of time. My expectations were certainly high, but you've more than delivered. It's an honor to hear you say so. And I couldn't be the only one you've made an impression on. 
the classmates and my brother Shirley think just as highly of you. I do hope you'll treasure those feelings as much as we've come to treasure you. Thank you, Your Highness. I'd like you to know that I'll always keep the virtues that these medals signify in my mind and I'll fight every day to return peace to Erebonia. I have a feeling you'll accomplish far more than those medals have ever intended to award. And in addition to those, I'd also like to give you this. There's Jim. Another pretty great quartz. What's this? It's something my brother gave me, but I think it would be more useful in your hands. Think of it as me fighting alongside alongside you and try to use it well. So that we can see Elise again, if nothing else. Absolutely, your highness. Alright. It was seen they're about to hold mass over at the cathedral. I'm thinking of sneaking in kind of incognito, but hmm? Something to matter? It's nothing. Just pretend I didn't say anything. Oh, and try to get some rest, Reen. You must be exhausted. She seems like she's holding got a lot on mine. Alright. Would you mind if I join you, Your Highness? I feel much more at ease if I at least escort you to the cathedral, just as precaution, of course. Would you, Reen? Thank you so much for your concern. Shall we be off then? Alright. Seeing Berea Hard's Cathedral up close is always so breathtaking. You've been to Berea Hard before, haven't you? That's right, I have a number of noble acquaintances here. Speaking of which, today's mass seems to have attracted more than the usual. It looks like it's intended as an occasion to mourn the, the losses suffered by Keldit. Oh. Judging by all the people I saw go in, it'll probably be a fairly large event. So it seems, I plan to attend as well to offer my prayers to the market manager, but no, it's nothing. Let's go inside, Rain. And so Rain and Princess Alvin entered the cathedral to attend mass currently being held. I don't think I did this with her before. Of course, they were careful to sit behind the majority of attendees to avoid standing out. However, during the sermon... There should be more than enough room. I'm sure you all heard about the t uh, heard by now of the terrible tragedy that took place in Celtic recently. In light of this, let us offer up our prayers for the people there. May Adios be with them all. <clears throat> Rest in peace, Otto. <laughs> What's going to happen to us from here on out? I can't believe they actually arrested Duke Alvarado. Not to mention the fact that we've been removed from the Nova Alliance jurisdiction. But why though? I see no reason to accept the Imperial Army when our own army is still intact. Duke Alvarez certainly has made a muck of things this time. Are these people for real? Aren't we supposed to be mourning the people of Celtic? There's a time and place for self-pity, and it sure as hell isn't now. Besides, Surely Keldig was partly to blame for what happened too. Wow. Wow. I heard all about their belligerent attitude towards Duval Perea. And yet he he was arrested for simply teaching him a lesson. Disgraceful, I know. The beloved empire certainly has been on the decline these past couple of years. I can't take much more of this. Just who do you who in the world do you people think you are? Huh? Who dares to raise their voice during Holy Mass? Wait, I know that face. Princess Alvin? Hmm. How could you make light of what happened in Keldic? Do you genuinely believe that it's none of your concern that Keldic deserved his fate? Is this how you treat your fellow Erebonians? Don't you realize that by putting aside such social labels, this tragedy could have been prevented? Your Highness. But maybe I'm not one to talk. I may have shared the same sentiments as you all had I continued to live my cozy life in Heimdall. I would have done little other than pity them without making an attempt to truly understand the gravity of the matter. In the end, it would have been just another event on a long list of things to eventually forget. 
but please, I beg of you, please realize that whether they are noble or commoner, every life matters. The people who suffered in Keldig, who lost their lives because of this war, are no less important to any of us. Oh, the tears. Each and every one of them lived a life of their own and had a future ahead of them until it was ripped away. Your Highness. Hmm. Your Highness. Ring. So please, I ask everyone in disagreement with the Duke's arrest to go see Keldick for themselves. If that's not enough to convince you his arrest was the right thing to do, then by all means, bring your complaints to me. I swear on the honor household that I will listen to you, to every single one of you, in earnest. Well, people are assholes, so, you know. After Princess Alfin's speech, they left the cathedral and had turned that it that had turned deathly quiet. From there, Reen escorted her back to the airport. The entire way, she struggled to hold back her tears. Thank you, Reen. I've gotten a hold of myself now. Oh, how embarrassing is it to act out like that during Holy Mass? I'm sure my brother would have been able to handle the situation better. Much better. Prince Oliver would have handled that in his own way, sure. That doesn't make your actions any less worthy of respect, however. You don't think it was too much? I mean, it, when I say the speech hit very close to home. That's why I'm sure some of the nobles there must have been impacted in some way, in the same way. If anything, I say you made me feel more proud to be a member of the Empire than ever before. Did I? Yes, she did. Yep, oh, gave it a head pat. Ah. <laughs> I'm sure when this war comes to an end, your words will be able to reach even more people, too. Until then, we all can do, all, all we can do is keep fighting. Thank you, Reen. Hearing you say that is such a relief. Happy to help, Your Highness. Let's just focus on what we can do for now, okay? Please don't forget that we're all here to support you. Thank you. All right. Okay. After Rena escorted Princess Alvin to the Courageous, he headed back to town. Okay. Last person. Hmm. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? You know what? We haven't done anything but Toa on screen. I think everybody else we at least did one event with on screen. So, uh, yeah. We'll... I think she's sitting out here, yeah. Alright, uh, yeah, we'll spend the last one on her. Everybody else is getting there. Like, we get close to... I think everybody's level 6, close to 7. I feel like by the time we get done, most people will be at level 7. At least I think they will. We'll see. Toa, is something wrong? Oh, no, it's nothing. I was just thinking about Real Hard finally being free from the Duke is, the Duke's clutches. I'm going to say the Duke is. <laughs> the, the Duke's clutches and ended up spaced out. <laughs> the Duke is. That's hilarious. You, <laughs> you know how when you finish something you're really nervous about and all the exhaustion washes over you at once? That's what I'm going through. But don't worry about me. I'll be back on the ship by the time everyone else is. The more she tells me not to worry, the more I get worried. I wonder if she needs someone to talk to. Me. Pretty sure everybody does. Um, mind if I sit with you for a while? There's a really nice breeze here, so I figured it might be a good spot to relax. Oh, sure, go ahead. <laughs> the Duke is. <laughs> I don't want to sound pushy here, but, well, if you have something on your mind, Toa, I'm more than willing to listen. Huh? I realize that I might not be able to offer any real help, but 
You've done so much for everyone and me personally, both at Thor's and on the Courageous. That's why I want to do whatever I can to help you in return. That's really sweet of you, Reen. Thanks. To tell the truth, I'm not really sure if I'm the best fit to be the best fit to the courageous captain anymore. Part of me wishes I declined back when the Viscount Arce asked me. Can I ask why? Well, we managed to set Bereard free and have Duke Alba rearrested, right? But when you think about it, that won't do much to ease the pain of those in Celtic. It won't bring back those that we've lost either. And it's not just that. Think back to when Signona was taken hostage or what happened with Angie. In the end, I just stood there uselessly waiting for you guys to solve everything. All while having the courageous at our disposal too. Um, that's literally your job, ma'am, is to fly, is to captain the courageous, not be a, a field battle. Like, come on, man. That's why I can't help but wonder what a more capable captain would have been able to accomplish. Have you been bottling this stuff up all this time? Sorry for unloading on you. I promised myself I'd become a much stronger person, and yet here I am fretting over every tiny little thing. I'm really not suited to be your captain at all, am I? Oh, okay. Whew. Thanks for getting it back for me, but still... Trust me when I say you, that your worries can be further from the truth. I can't think of a single person more suited to be our captain than you. But, Reen, in the end, we're still students. We don't have that the kind of experience Prince Oliver and Vic, uh, Viscount Arce do. There's no, no uh, way anyone expects you to be able to do what they can. But despite that, you took it upon yourself to accept such a crucial position in Viscount Arce's place. You're doing everything you can to fulfill that role, even when you're just a student. Seeing you work like that has, it's what's inspired all of us, you know. You wouldn't be the same team without you. That's not true. Yep. Huh? I'm certain that everyone, I mean, everything we've done so far, bringing us one step closer to taking back our school. Accomplishing that will probably be our biggest challenge yet, though. It, it won't. And that's exactly why we need you. Having you alongside us is the greatest motivation we could ever we could ever ask for. Of course, we have no intention of letting this be one-sided. We'll be there for you, you as much as you are for us. You mean it, Ring? Boy, you're awfully convincing, huh? You're right. We should be using our worries as a means to better ourselves, shouldn't we? I'm such a dummy for forgetting something as simple as that. Hey, we all have our moments. It won't be long now until we can finally take back doors. We're gonna go all out and make it a reality, right? Right. She just needed some reassurance, obviously. Alright, that is everybody uh, but like I said make sure you go around I think at the, at the end you can get like a book and a f like recipe um, definitely want to make like make sure you attend Alfin's bonding event here hmm. if you want to unlock her final event um, I think that's it though I think we can get the hell out of here uh, yeah, through the airport. I think you come back at least two or three more times to talk to uh, Scarlet, and she gives you the rest of the story. I think it's two or three. Should I go back inside? I feel like there's still more to see here in Brea Heart. Returning to the Courageous. Whoop, here we go. Nah, I suppose I'll head back inside. I can sit back and wait for the others to get back. Ring. Okay. 
Looks like we caught you at just the right time. Were you planning to go inside too? Oh, hello. What's wrong? You all seem you seem all flustered. Well, we got a message from the guys still in, inside the ship. They said that something's happened over in Crossville. In Crossville? Yeah, so. We saw the city covered by a blue barrier where Guerrilla Fortress was. But it's not that, I'm guessing. Believe it or not, it's something even re weirder. We're planning to go and get a closer look at it. Would you mind grabbing everyone else still in town and bringing them back here? We'll be getting everything ready for liftoff in the meantime. Okay, I'll be back as soon as I can. I'll leave everything here to you. So not a true emergency. This just kind of all this part kind of lets you know what's um that something's happened over in Crossville too. Wow, that must have been tough. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she had to say it like that. Um, what you can get here is um a thirty-eight. I think it's the most you can get for this uh, chapter. Um, but of course I didn't do. Um, two quests that think that I think what uh blue blocks give you like nine total, I mean, five total, and then the other one is four, so yeah, that would have been about it. So, yeah, that's all it was. I just missed those two quests. She's like, Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Now this part is the last part before, um, you know, we got to. You still got the trials uh, to do, but this next part of coming um, is still uh, before the finale. Of course, to the east. North coast is clear, and all hands remain vigilant. The ship's approaching maximum cruising speed. We should be getting close to the fortress soon. Please get in touch with the 4th uh, Armored Division and the Railway Military Service. Aye, right, Captain. Oh my, I think I can see something in this distance. What the... I'm getting some very strange readings here. Can. Huh. There seems to be something emitting light in the distance as well. What in the world is that? I think it's called the, is it called I don't know. The Azure Tree? Or something like that. I forgot exactly what what, what exactly is going on there. I know some little things, but like I said, I'm gonna end up playing the games, and you end up going through all that stuff. That blue barrier that was surrounding the city before is gone. Now, if they were so concerned about the city, when they but go now there, there's something even more unbelievable in its place. When they go there and check it out, an azure tree. Yeah, it looks like a tree to me, too. It's got all those branches coming out of it. I don't think trees so vast even exist in legend. Never mind in reality. Yeah, there's something completely otherworldly about it. Do you know what it is, Celine? I wish I did. There's nothing like that in any of the clan's legends. Hmm. Just what is happening over in Crossbell? Right, you see what I'm saying? But like they wouldn't go check that out. That's a part of like Erebonia too. Wait, or is it? Maybe not.
Hmm. Now that's damned impressive. It must be over 2,000 arch tall. Oh, never thought I'd come face to face with something that big in my lifetime. <laughs> Life's just full of surprises. <laughs> oh, this is the very essence of beauty. So this is the fruit of the Azure Zero project, a testament to the power of human obsession. Yeah, so they mentioned a little bit about it. <sighs> Looks like everything did go according to plan. Not that any other outcome was ever a possibility with my illustrious lord lending a hand. Ah, so Aaron Road is there. Oh, that's going to be interesting. So that showed up as a result of that phantasmal blaze plan of yours? And you're planning on spawning something like that over here, too? Hmm. That we are. What you see before you is a miracle born of human hands, made manifest by the Zero Child. The Zero Child is Kia, um, a little girl that you end up uh, finding in the Crossbell games. Uh, and she becomes a part of the crew and everything like that with them trying to protect her. But you end up finding out that that's that's her real uh, uh, not her real name, but her that's who she is. She's the zero child. The end of the second movement is finally nigh. Let the preparations begin. But you have some people over there that's trying to stop what's happening there, just like we're over here stopping and what they're trying to do here to make all of it connect. This story's finale is bound to be one to remember. Crazy stuff, huh? <laughs> Guess it's almost time to wrap things up. Wonder if it'll go how she and Campanella wanted to, though. Campanella, my god. Heimdall. With a million capital. That is a humongous castle. Excuse us, Lord Rufus. <clears throat> there they are. Aurelia and... Bardius. Well, well. If it isn't General Le Guin and Brigadier General Bardius, I had thought you were still on the Western Front. Might I ask what brings you here? Do you even need to ask? First Ruer, now Boreahard. The Eastern Front is collapsing as we speak. I see no reason for us to remain in the West any longer. I wouldn't go quite that far, General. As long as the West remains well protected, Heimdall will not fall. As for Nortia and the elements which sided with Duke Alborea, they could always abandon their neutrality. The war is still ours for the winning. That hasn't changed. <laughs> An impressive analysis. By the way, would you happen to know anything about that vast tree that sprouted up in Crossbell? Is it even a tree to begin with? I haven't viewed it from up close, but... The pictures were like nothing I'd ever seen. I feel like they, they definitely did like a redesign on her face. If you look at this one and then the next game, like there's a vast difference. They, uh, they changed in her complexion and her face. It could be completely harmless, but it's likely causing Erebonians in the East no shortage of anxiety just by being there. I quite agree, and that concerns me as well. Still, Duke Cayenne insists its appearance was planned, there should be nothing to fear. Really now? I was aware he was affiliating himself with some suspicious society of sorts. Hmm. What happens behind the scenes is of no concern to us, I suppose. We are warriors. We live to fight on the battlefield. So, dear Chief of Staff, who is our next opponent to be? <laughs> Getting right down to business, I see. 
I'd like for the two of you to defend the capital. Your opponents are to be the 3rd and 4th Armored Divisions who will be advancing upon it within the next few days. Oh, is that so? What? So they're risking everything in an attempt to take back Heimdall? That is what I predict will happen, yes. I think Craig the Red and One-Eyed Zex will prove to be enough entertainment for the two of you, wouldn't you agree? After all, only the best will do for the two strongest soldiers the Provincial Army has to offer. Mm -hmm. All right, you win. You have my attention. <laughs> he didn't even say. He's like, well, you yeah. got <laughs> The prospect alone has my blood boiling in anticipation. <clears throat> <laughs> I concur. Very well. We shall do as you say. This is sure to be a clash for the ages. Now, even after this game, you see the growth that happens in that attitude that they have in this game as well. Well, this is happening inside the castle. This is Cedric. I had no idea all this existed right under the palace. Alfin and, uh, Alfin's younger brother and uh, Oliver's younger brother, who was half younger brother. To Cayenne, can I ask exactly where we're going? <laughs> there is no need to look so concerned, Your Highness. The place we are traveling to is to the center of this city. No, this country. And a place that governs a great power. It is where everything both ends and begins. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Please, be careful of your footing. If you were to fall off the platform, you most assuredly would go splat and die. <laughs> okay. Now, now, it won't do to frighten him. And I must say, I don't recall doing so ever being part of your duties. <gasps> Pardon me. I believe we're almost there. Crazy stuff at work, man. I've been waiting for you. Vita Clotilde? The opera singer? What are you doing in a place like this? Greetings, witch. I see that tree emerged successfully. <laughs> it certainly did. All that remains now is to continue the preparations here. However, let me remind you that under no circumstance. <laughs> if you would, spare me. You've made yourself perfectly clear on occasions past. And I am hardly enough of a fool to attempt to defy commands from a witch. What are the two of you talking about? And why did you bring me here? <laughs> Patience, your highness. Mm -hmm. All will be clear in due time. Oh my, could this be it? Yeah, so... Get a glimpse of that. Yeah. What is... What is that thing? What... What's this feeling? <laughs> Marvelous! Marvelous! This is the legendary demon said to wield a thousand weapons! The Crimson Calamity! Which was sealed away by Saint Sandlot and Dreykels 250 years ago, and a fragment of the Great Power! The Vermilion yeah. Testarossa! Well, there's a new knight. Yeah. Really nothing else left to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> you end up seeing how this all unfolds.
Toa looks pissed. The Azure Tree? That's the name of the bizarre tree that appeared in Crossbell then? Yeah, I found it out from the guild branch over there. Things still seem to be tense over in their direction. No one's really sure what it's for or what it can do. Don't think it'll have any direct effect on Erebonia, though. Well, I suppose that's good news. Sort of. Still, people on this side of the country are understandably feeling uneasy about it. Yeah, people have enough to worry about without a giant glowing tree sprouting up from out of nowhere. Anyone would start feeling nervous at the sight of such a thing. At least it should keep Calvert off our backs for a while, right? They're as clueless as we are on what that thing is, and they're not going to risk an attack before they know for sure. Exactly. In a sense, it's doing the same thing for us the barrier around Crossbell City did before it up and vanished. It's probably the best distraction Erebonia could ask for about now. Oh, is that what your bracer instincts are telling you? It doesn't take a bracer to think that, Eusis. If Calvert were to invade right now while the war's going on... True. The situation we're under is plenty chaotic as it is. All we can do right now is keep doing what we always have, and gather information. I'm sure we can do something to improve the situation here, but we don't know enough to decide what that something is. I'm with Gaius. Let's just take a deep breath and do the best we can. That's the best attitude to have right now, too. One thing we could do is keep looking around for other Thor students. We could always use more help, right? We still need more Zemirian ore, too. Oh, that's right! And there are still more spirit shrines left to explore as well. Strangely enough, our best course of action is to simply continue doing what we've always done, albeit with renewed dedication. That works for me. Sounds like you've got things covered in the East, which means that all that's left for me is to wish you good luck. Take care of them, okay, Sarah? What else would I do? And you take care of yourself, too. We wouldn't want anything to happen to you before you reunite with your dearest Carnelia, now would we? Yeah. <laughs> would you just drop that already? Anyway, keep it up, guys. I'll be in touch. That's hilarious. Oh, there goes all my fun. Yeah, so if you read the Carnelia books, you figure out what that's all about. What was all that about? Toval's girlfriend? It did sound that way. For further details, please consult a certain famous novel about a certain lovable scamp. Now, certainly available in all bookstores. Poor Toval. Ring knows, so... Anyway, we should probably get to work. The best place to start would be checking the latest request from Prince Oliver. Alright, I'm gonna kind of blaze through this part. Yeah, because I don't really think I'm gonna do much of these. I'll decide right now, but... There's a request. Yeah, if we can, I'd love to help her out. Me too. Sorry, that was for Rosine. It's the least we can do after all the market manager did for us. I might do that. I'm in agreement. We should try and help her if time permits. Klaus also has something in mind for us, it would seem. And that being said, I think it'd be best if I were to accompany you for the time being. I'd like to come along too. Especially since we have the spirit shrines to worry about. Of course, Celine will be coming with me. You'll need both of us to get through the shrines, after all. That sounds fine by me. Thanks. All right then. Let's go. All right. It's not possible to move, Laura. Um, yeah, we're gonna decide. Uh, I've been rocking with Usus a little bit. Gaius and hmm. I guess we'll keep Fee for a little bit. All right, thank you guys. I'm gonna end here. When we come back, that's what we'll be doing. We're gonna take on the shrines first before we do anything else to get that out the way, because they can be kind of tedious and you know, I still need to change out my party to fit the the things again. As a matter of fact, but I'll do that when I come back. Thank you guys for rocking with me. I will see you in the next vid. Till then, peace. Tap that like button, guys. It helps. <laughs>